When you look at a lot of different video effects, you'll generally find that this is true. So if you're aware of this, it can massively help get your head around how the original effect was done when you know of what was real and then what has been added digitally. Hey guys, and welcome back to Flatpak Effects. Now this is a two part video and what we're going to do is break down some of the effects seen in Eric's Switzerland cinematic video and also his Sweden DJI video. So diving straight in with the Sweden video here. One of the first effects I've singled out here is this effect here at the start where we have this transition from a drone shot, which is a bird's eye shot here over these trees. And it's going from this winter sort of scene where you've got this snow falling into this sort of autumn or summer sort of scene. Now there's a couple of layers going on here. The first is that we've got some overlay effects, which are the, which are the snowflakes, which are falling downward. Now these sort of elements are called overlays and you can find them through different VFX uh, websites. You can even find them on Storyblocks, Envato, that sort of thing. And basically what you do is you just drop them in and then you change the blending mode and you can get different effects like rain or snow in this case. And a lot of them look very realistic. In this case, it does look really good here. We've also got a fade transition, which could have been done by just using a mask and then it's fading back to the original shot. Now I'd say definitely that this was the original shot, but we've also got another element here, which are the smoke layers. So we've got this sort of smoke layer that sits over the top. That I would say is most definitely another layer. You can see as the camera zooming in, it's not animating exactly over the top of the video footage. It's kind of following the camera as it's rotating. So it's not kind of glued to the top of the trees. So it makes me think that that's some sort of overlay effect. The other thing he's done here, which is really clever is a desaturation effect or a hue shift over to something that's a bit more blue. And when you layer all of those different elements, it really just helps tie that entire effect together. We've got this really interesting sequence here. And this could be done using a few different techniques. One is you have to get the background shots or the background plates. And this is just a matter of shooting the background scene where you're kind of setting up the shot where you want the object to be flying through and you're just pulling focus to simulate as in you are racking focus on the object that's flying through the scene. Now you could also do the focus later once you've already got your shot. So the original shot might've just been something like this but it always looks better if you can get that at the location when you're filming these sort of effects because it can really help make it look a lot more believable. The other thing here is we've obviously got the tripod base which is spinning around. Now I'd say definitely the way this was been the way this has been done is it's just a simple photograph of that base plate and then it's just had some rotation applied to it. You can see here that as it's rotating, the lighting is pretty much staying consistent on the tripod, which makes me think that it's a photo that's been taken from one point and then it's being basically rotated in post. This one here is a little bit different in the fact that it's rotating along the center point. So in order to do that, it could be that this has been put on some sort of little mini sort of lazy Susan or little turntable, or it's, even be, if, or it's even been suspended from a string, which I've shown you how to do that in a previous tutorial. And then it's a matter of rotating that object around. So we can see that we're getting some rotation as it's sort of rotating around here. Now this transition here, where it all comes together is very clever. And we got to think about this as in multiple elements here. So we've got, we've got to connect all the individual elements back together. So we could take the original shot, if I just held the gimbal up in front of me and took a video of that, you could essentially draw mass around that and break it down. But what makes me think he hasn't done it that particular way, if you look at this element here, you can see the top of that tripod. So if you just drew a mask and broke it down, like I was saying before, you wouldn't be able to see the top of that, right? So we need to get a shot where we can see the top of that. So when it's breaking apart. So I'd say he's done this in reverse where he's individually filmed those elements like we've been talking about before. And then he's brought them all together using After Effects to recreate the original gimbal. Another small giveaway here is you can see where that additional leg or the transition from when the, the, the 
digital object that we filmed matches up with that original shot or the original Ronan. And we can see there's a very slight transition if you look very closely here, where it transitions back to its original shot. So that then leaves us with this shot here where the gimbal's going, being thrown up in the air. Now I believe this shot has been filmed in reverse. So by that, I mean that Eric started back here with the camera locked off on a tripod. He's then holding the gimbal and then he started to walk backwards and throw the gimbal up in the air as he's kind of walking backwards out of the frame. So he could have done that very quickly and grabbed the gimbal like he could have thrown it up and then kind of done that motion of him moving backwards and then quickly grab the gimbal before it landed on the floor. He could have even laid something out on the floor here um, or he could have even had someone off to the side that caught the gimbal. You know, so there could be a few different ways of how he achieved that effect. But I definitely believe at some point that he's throwing a gimbal up in the air to get that point where it's kind of locked off in the air. Then right here, we can see where we're transitioning. You would also have to remove that original gimbal from the shot. So at this point where you've got a gimbal sitting in the air, you're going to have to take everything out of the scene, continue to film an empty plate as we call it, and then you can use that to draw a mask to get that clean background because we need to basically remove the gimbal out of the shot so that it can match up with our digital gimbal as it flies in. So here's another really interesting transition here, which is a bunch of overlay effects. So we've got one really tight shot here of this bokeh of the fire. It then has this sort of fade transition into this shot here, which is a close up of the fire burning. We then get what looks like to be some sparks that is created from something landing in the fire or something like that. So he's throwing something into the fire to get those sparks coming out. And then he's done a very clever transition of the colors using Lemetri color here from an orange fire color into a green sort of color to match into the second shot. And over the top of that, He's then added some additional dust elements. So I think these, these to me look like little dust elements in the shot. Um, it's hard to tell exactly what they are, but that's what I think they are. I think they're dust elements. And he's also colored them to help with that transition as it's moving between the shots. Again, we've got what looks like these snow elements here or dust elements, which are also colored to match the scene. And then he's got this digital zoom out of the Northern Lights as it transitions to that next shot. This is a really nice transition from this log splitting where we've got a mask that's been drawn down the middle here. So it then creates a nice transition point for the camera to zoom through. So we've got a digital zoom through that mask. So then we can get rid of that top shot and then we've got a shot underneath, which is what you're looking at here. These fire embers here, I'd say are, are definitely an overlay effect that is also used and it just helps tie that overall transition together really nicely because it looks like we've got a bit of a glow coming from a fire which is underneath the shot here. So just out of frame, there could be a fire there. And there's also a fire going on in the background here and these embers have basically been overlaid over the top. So I'd say these are real embers, but they're used as an overlay effect. And he's continued that all the way through into this shot. And again, it's just a really clever way of using those overlay elements to kind of tie all these shots together. And it looks really cinematic. And this end shot I really love here. It's just so creative where he's got these two shots that are transitioning together. So what you're looking at here is one shot. He would have set up the camera on a tripod and locked it off. Then what he would have done is grabbed the gimbal and essentially put it on the rock. He's lined up the camera so he's seeing this reflection. So if you imagine that this person wasn't there, this is what you'd be looking at. So you'd be seeing this reflection here and the gimbal standing there. He's then basically lent in and picked up that gimbal. As you can see here, exactly what he's doing. He's leaning in, picking up that gimbal 
and basically taking it out of shot and then putting it back into place. So he could have done this in reverse. He could have picked it up and placed it down or he could have just picked it up and taken it out of shot and he could have just reversed the clip in order to make it work for what he needed. The top part of this is uh, just a still frame. So once he's got the camera in the right position or the gimbal, he's then just freeze framed and drawn a mask that goes around here or the top half, I would most likely say. He's probably drawn a mask around here because drawing masks around here can be iffy if you're trying to match shots. So it's easier just to draw where you can't see that line. So straight through here because it's so dark and then just freeze frame that entire top part so the gimbal is always in that position. And then just let the video play out in the bottom part here in the reflection. So again, it's just a really creative shot. I just think it shows how creative Eric really is. Another thing that's really important to know with a lot of the effects in this particular video is that he's moving from or he's transitioning into the original shots. So example of this is back in the original shot where we had that bird's eye shot over the trees and we were fading from the snow shot into the shot of the bird's eye. So the second shot was the original shot. Then he's manipulated that in the first part of the effect. So the second part is generally the original shot. It's not always the case, but in a lot of cases, this is generally true. Another example is also in this same video where he's transitioning from the gimbal shot of throwing it up and we're getting all the different parts kind of come together. So we started from the end and worked back to the original shot. So we started with all the elements flying through the air and then coming all the way back to the original shot. So by using that rule of thumb, if I look at the very end of the video and I can work out, okay, what was the original shot, that can massively help me in trying to work out what has been manipulated about the video or what are the elements that have been added to this to make up that particular effect. When you look at a lot of different video effects, you'll generally find that this is true. So if you're aware of this, it can massively help get your head around how the original effect was done when you know of what was real and then what has been added digitally. So there you go, guys. That's part one of this video. I'll be uploading part two in the following weeks, so make sure to look out for that. Now, if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out very similar videos and breakdowns just like like this one over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.